hey, what's up? You got your new startup, you're ready to roll and you're figure, trying to figure out, how am I gonna fund this startup? I need to get into an office, right? I need to hire some employees, I need to do a marketing campaign. Well, in today's video, we're gonna break down the seven steps to securing funding for your startup and making it happen right now. Let's get to work. So step one to fund your startup. Number one, you gotta budget those startup costs, right? What are the startup costs you need to get off the ground? Usually when you're looking to get that startup off the ground, there's some initial product development, right? There's some initial sales development. And then once you have that in place, then you need to hire salespeople. You need to have an online infrastructure. You probably need to have a CRM, a client relationship management tool. You need to look at, you know, are you gonna get an office? Are you gonna go virtual? You know, who are the first people you need to hire? And once you have those startup costs put together, then you can get ready to roll. Now, one of the biggest mistakes people make in the startup cost estimates is they think, oh, I need a million dollars. No, you don't. What you need is proof of concept. If you watch Shark Tank, Damon John, and everyone talks about proof of concept, that means you have a product that people actually want or a service people are actually willing to pay for. So step one, budget for those startup costs. The second step to funding your startup is you need to get a credit snapshot, right? Oftentimes we think, oh, I'm ready for you know venture capital, ready for that Series A funding, but what you really need is proof of concept, and so you're probably gonna go some creative financing to do it, so you need to get a credit snapshot and see where you're at. Hopefully you can do it without a hard credit pull. You can go to Experian.com. Uh, of course, on our marketplace, we have a way for you to get free pre-approval, but get a credit snapshot because your credit is going to be a big tool to get that initial startup funding, get that proof of concept, and then now you have a shot at getting millions of dollars in venture capital in the future, so that's step two. The third step to funding your startup is don't quit your day job, right? A lot of the times we think, oh, I'm gonna quit my day job and go all in and high risk. No, smart entrepreneurs often don't quit their day job. Sarah Blakely, who started a little company called Spanx and just had a billion dollar exit herself, kept her day job. She was selling fax machines out in the very hot, humid summers and hot, humid weather there in the South. She kept her day job for a couple years and then when she had enough sales and traction, then she you know, went full time with business and there's a reason why when you have your day job, you have income coming in to pay your bills, take some of that pressure off. The second thing is with creative financing, you can actually secure financing and loans based off of your personal income that you can then use to jumpstart and grow that business. So step three, don't quit your day job. All right, fourth step, you need to get those income documents put together, right? We're talking about funding for your startup. If you're gonna fund that startup, well, you need to have your stuff together. And if it's income documents like last year's tax return, your most recent three bank statements, or even you know your last couple pay stubs, those are little assets, little documents that are gonna help you get some creative funding and financing to get your startup off the ground. Again, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they think they need tons of money to do it. You don't. You can do it with as little as $5,000, $15,000, $50,000 and really get proof of concept, make some money, be profitable. Once you have traction, then it's much easier to get larger amounts of funding from investors. But in today's world, with so much uncertainty, investors wanna see proof of concept. And the way to do that, get some creative funding, so get your income documents put together. The fifth step, my friends, is, okay, we're funding this startup. Do we need a loan or a line of credit? Maybe we need both. So you wanna look at all of your options, get them out on the table, and then decide what's best. The thing about getting a loan is once you get a loan in place, once you pay it off, now you have to go get another loan and jump through all the hoops of getting a loan, which can be a real pain in the butt. What you may wanna consider doing is getting a revolving credit line, like a 0% interest business credit card or a line of credit, and then you can use it, pay it down, use it, pay it down. That will give you all sorts of options to really boost your business and grow fast. But when you're looking at funding your startup, decide whether you want a loan or a line of credit. Sometimes it's both, but I highly recommend you consider the line of credit because it's so flexible. 
So we're looking to get funding financing for that startup. The sixth step is don't just go to one lender. Don't go walk into the bank that's going to hard pull your credit and hurt you. Instead, make sure you're working with a marketplace of options. The benefits are obvious. If you are looking at a marketplace of options, you've got all the options on the table to make sure you're getting the very best option for your business. If you go and see just one lender, then they might only have a couple different options. If you go and see your bank, it's only SBA loan options. So those can be very difficult to secure. So step six, make sure you're working with an entire funding marketplace of options so that you get the very best option that you're in the driver's seat to decide what works best to fund your startup. Now the final seventh step of the seven steps to securing funding for your startup. Number seven, work with a funding advocate, right? Imagine that you are accused of a heinous crime and you're gonna to go to jail for a long, long time. Well, you've got two options. You can DIY it and try and defend yourself in the court of law. That might not be a good idea. Or you can find a legal advocate who's going to know all the laws and is experienced and help tons of people to, you know, successfully win their case so they don't go to jail wrongfully for a long time. It's the same thing with funding. You want to have a funding advocate. You can DIY it and hope things work out for the best, but if you go to the wrong places, now you might have inquiries on your credit which lead to more denials and now you're not going to be able to get any funds for another, you know, 6 to 12 months. Put the odds in your favor by working with a true funding advocate, someone who's helped thousands of people, who's built a successful funding marketplace, who can get you the very best options and then present them to you and you're in the driver's seat to decide what works best for you guys. So that is it. Those are the seven steps to securing funding for your startup. And obviously once you have that funding, now you can grow, you can get that proof of concept. In the future, you can get investor funds, private equity funds, so many options. But in today's world, if you don't have proof of concept, if you don't have sales, if you don't have traction, very difficult to get the bigger funding that you want. So that's why it starts with creative funding and financing. And these are the seven steps to make that happen in today's business world.